Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video series we're going to get started looking at Symphony 3 for beginners. So by the end of this tutorial series you'll have made this app which I'm calling my GitHub. It's obviously a total ripoff of GitHub and in fact we're using GitHub's API behind the scenes to pull in this data and the idea is that you can go off to uh, any of the available sort of routes uh, or users sorry on, on GitHub, pull in their profile and see the repositories list and, and populate this little sidebar thing here with their with the data you don't actually need to have a, a github account you don't need to use their um you don't have to have like a, an account yourself to use their api we're just you can pop in any user's data and just play along basically but i figured github as developers probably you've got a profile in some way but you don't need to have like a, an application set up or anything so we're not authenticating you can go ahead and add that in if you wish but it's really sort of not within the scope of what we're trying to do so the technologies that we're going to cover off is symphony 3 obviously um well that's going to be what we do like all our code inside uh, we're going to use guzzle to talk to the api so github's api and we're not really going to have to know too much about guzzle honestly to be able to do this uh, so don't worry if you've never really played with guzzle before but basically guzzle's just like um, a http client for sending requests off to apis and stuff like that as i say we'll cover it as we go through uh, we're going to be covering twig quite heavily and bootstrap so that's for all, all our layouts so those are really the the, the core bits that we'll, we'll be looking at as we go through now this series is designed for you to sort of follow along whilst watching the videos so I would advise that you do that if you first learn in Symfony then the easiest way to sort of get your head around the syntax and stuff is, is to sit there and type it in honestly copy paste or just download in the repo from GitHub you're not going to learn as much as if you actually go ahead and, and type it in yourself so we're going to be working in an app uh, environment called app dev or just development and uh, the way that we get to that so symphony's got two environments set up and technically three but two environments that we can sort of get to straight away we've got the concept of app which is our production environment and we've got the concept of app dev which is our development environment obviously in development you want to be in app dev as that gives you access to the web debug toolbar um, which we'll see in a sec to get access to that the, you can put your IP address into this section. This is sort of a way of restricting down the amount of people that got access to your development environment. You only really want to put in um, your IP address, obviously. The, you will see if you go onto Google and do like an in URL app underscore dev and then search on that, you'll see quite a lot of people deploy uh, this completely unrestricted into the, the big wide web uh, which is a total fail so don't be one of those people um, and don't just comment this bit out as well as that's uh, that that does resolve this immediate problem but yeah don't be one of those people so to get your IP address just google it if you're unsure but I know mine is 192.168.127 so just pop that in there and then if we refresh now we should see the the sort of the welcome page which is great so that's rendering off um, rendering is a term that you'll hear a lot in symphony it just means to to take like a template or whatever and then display it out on uh, on send it out as the response from from the web server basically from symphony so that's getting rendered out as i say from inside our default controller a default controller knows to sort of work uh, by default obviously because of the routing setup so routing is what controls all the urls uh, and in this case what we're doing is using this this resource um sort of setting to allow us to put any controllers inside this controller directory as long as they follow this this controller convention then they're just going to get picked up and we'll use annotations to set up all our controllers so that's how that's all sort of just immediately working in case you're you're wondering uh, as I, I remember when i first loaded up a symphony project i was like well it's great it all seems to work but i have no idea how it's all you know fit together like but yeah there we go um yeah so we've got this default controller uh, and that's what you're seeing as i say uh, just to very quickly cover off, so obviously we've got the root, which just a slash, which just means the, the root of the website. Then we've named it so that if inside, um, it, throughout your application, if you want to refer to this root, you refer to it by the name so that if you change the URL, then you don't need to go through and like find that URL and replace it and, and whatnot. You can just basically change that as long as everything references the name. You, you're good to go and change stuff around. Uh, the controllers follow a, a convention so everything the name is fine you can have whatever name you like um 
and then it has to end in controller and then also your actions have to end in action like that's the best practice anyway you may be able to get around that i think there is some ways around that but the, the general best practice is your controllers follow that convention and then uh, it, this convention for your naming request we'll get to as we go through a uh, very common um, thing that you'll see on a symphony action and then all your actions have to return a response as if, if it's a controller action you have to return a response so controller you think about it it's what receives the the request that comes in and then it's what sort of hands over to something else to to figure out like the business logic and then it deals with sending back the response. So that's basically Symphony in a nutshell, honestly, um, the journey from request to response. Anyway, there's all this uh, carry on going on here with the getting the parameters out and whatnot and displaying them. You don't need to worry about that at this stage. The important things really are return this render. So this is common syntax you'll see throughout. And then this default index HTML twig is actually coming from resources uh, views. So you sort of skip the views bit um, but that is where it's where Symphony is going to look for your views uh, and then it, it's living inside this default index. So that's where that's coming from. And again, we're going to cover on Twig a lot in this uh, series. So don't worry about it if you don't sort of immediately get it. But that's basically what's happening there. And then this array, uh, so the new PHP uh, 5.6 syntax, I think it is, where we got the newer array syntax. So that's why you're seeing the, the, just the, the single bracket there. That's what's going on. It's, it's the same as writing array like that and then um, popping it like that. So yeah, it's the same, exactly the same thing, but it's just shorthand syntax for array. And we pass in any parameters to our, our templates uh, to be rendered off via an array. So we're not going to use that controller at all. In fact, we're just going to go ahead and delete it. And I'm going to go ahead and create one called GitHut controller. As I say, you can call them literally anything as long as they follow that convention of been uh, named with whatever uh, controller. And again, if we look inside our routing, you can see anything inside the controller directory is immediately going to get picked up um, as a valid controller. So let's just namespace this off. Uh, All Symphony follows this this convention. Uh, we're inside the controller directory. So again, app bundle controller, nothing particularly crazy going on there. Uh, our class is going to be called git hook controller. So we're just following that same convention of naming it after the file. And we're going to extend controller. So Symphony's uh, framework bundle controller. So that should be pretty good there. And then we can go ahead, uh, go ahead, sorry, and put in our, our function. So just using PHP storm shortcuts there, just pub f to do uh, pub f and then tab to sort of uh, quickly write out a public function. And the, the way that we're going to start off this is we're just going to call it git hut action. Doesn't really matter what it's called, honestly, at this stage. Uh, and then we're going to pass in the request. We shouldn't really need this, but uh, we'll pass it in anyway. So HTTP foundation It's one of the tricky things really is um, knowing which one of the sort of auto suggested um, parameters to to use but you, you, I guess that just comes over time and then we're going to use annotations here so we'll need to set these up as well we'll need to use a use statement and it, honestly when you're first starting out in, in many ways it's just easier to copy paste from the docs on stuff like this but it is as I say it's nice to type it out so that you start kind of getting used to the way that it, it just sort of feels under your fingers I guess um, we'll call this a git hut name uh, git hut and honestly, you'll probably get your um, speech marks and stuff messed up as you go through the first few times as well. You can see there it's picking up the fact that we don't have a use statement for this root annotation. So let's see if we can get away with just typing in root and then seeing if we can find the routing annotation. That should be should be good for us there. We've got our request. And then so here what we need to do is return and then this render as we saw in the, the previous example. And what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the default template as well. Uh, we're going to get rid of that entire directory. In fact, we'll create our own called git hut just so that we know it's ours. And then this base template is what we'll, um, we'll, we'll render off to that first, in fact. So we'll go with base.html.twig. And then we're going to need to pass in some parameters, most likely. Let's just have a quick look at what's inside our base template. Um, in fact, we'll be okay not to pass in any parameters here. Uh, but we could potentially 
go ahead and override some things but we, we won't to begin with we'll just render that off uh, in fact we can just get rid of that as well just to keep it as simple as possible and we'll see exactly what we get if we go now to our route ah immediately as i say caught myself out with my uh with my speech marks <laughs> terrible as you can see there's nothing there uh, which is good because there's nothing actually on that base template so the base template we could stick something in here just to show that it is rendering off uh, and there we go all good but the the thing with twig is that we get these the concept of blocks and what that allows us to do is create like inheritance structures with our template so we can have another template that sort of sits on top of that so let's go ahead and create that now we'll just call this one index .html.twig, you always call it .html.twig or .text.twig or whatever, but to, to sort of signify that it's a twig template, you always really do it like that. And then we're going to use this uh, parens uh, percentage syntax and we're just going to say extends and we're going to extend that base template. And now because we're extending that template, what we can do is put something inside this body tag. So what we're going to do, or block even, so if we redeclare that block, so block body, and then just make sure to close it off as well, so end block. You can do end block body as well. Uh, I generally don't just do end block, but yeah, so if we put something else in there and then render that off, what we should find, uh, we're not actually rendering that template though, are we? We need to change this up to, so we're now not rendering off the base directly if you think of like the base is like um abstract so you wouldn't really use it directly it's just the base and everything else sort of sits on top of that that's the the way that i'm thinking about this so i'm going to say render off instead remember you skip the views directory we don't reference the resources directory skip the views so in this case it's going to be git hut git hut slash and then index.html.twig and if we refresh that now we see that we get our, our sort of our mess so let's quickly set this up so that it's nice and bootstrappy so if we go across to get bootstrap get bootstrap uh, and what we're going to do is just nick the starter templates and also the styles now there is better ways to do this but for the purposes of demonstration this should see us through i think that will be enough actually um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this entire link, so effectively just use the CDN link or Content Delivery Network link, where it says Style Sheets. I'm just going to go ahead and just pop that in above. A bit difficult to, to see because the screen's quite small, um, but effectively just pasting in the Bootstrap CSS. So immediately I've got access to that. Um, I don't really need to worry about the Style Sheets at this stage, but we will come up with our own Style Sheet anyway. So that's got the Bootstrap stuff in there. And then what I'm going to do is just get rid of that bit and oh, I probably needed to keep that bit open actually go to the examples go to the starter template just take a copy of the source or at least the important bits of the source I'm just going to nick this nav bar just paste this in into our, our body there like that I'm just going to call this off to so get rid of these bits here I don't really care about them and I'm also going to get rid of this button thing here I don't really care about that and I'm just going to call this my git hut, my git hut, and set this to navbar default. Don't really want the navbar inverse. I think it's navbar default. Um, you're free to experiment with this as, as you see fit. And then what I want to do is rather than have to keep declaring new sort of git um, bootstrap rows and stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and do this and then put the body inside them. So I'm going to do uh, new, let's see. So we've got the container. Let's just nick this bit first and then I'll show you what I mean. So I'll stick that bit there and then we've got this starter template. Now also I'll need to, I will need to put in a style sheet as this is going to mess up a touch in a sec as we'll see. Yes, yeah, so it overwraps there because we need to put in this. So if we go into the view source of here and then go into the starter template, we do need this bit as well. So what you need to do, Symphony best practice this is a bit weird honestly but like you've got your views and that up here you've got your code and that in here in the source directory and then you, your css actually lives inside the web directory so i'm going to put it in here css i'm going to just create this and call it say uh, my style or yeah my style do css paste that in i'm going to change this off to say 90 pixels as that padding's not really brilliant um i'm pretty sure that's right but we'll see anyway when we when we render this off go back to the base and then I need to add in a another thing here so I'm going to do link colon CSS like that and just tab that out so um, PHP storm shortcut just I, I 
struggle to remember how to do a style sheet, honestly. Uh, so I don't really do them like that. Anyway, and then what you need to do is wrap this in some parens like this because we're going to use uh, Symphony's asset uh, syntax for this. So asset. And then we will be living, I think it's just my style. My styles, is it? My style. No, my style CSS. So let's pop, pop that in brackets. It should be good. Asset my style. Let's just give this a refresh back on our own page. No, it's not picked it up. View source, where are we? My style. An error occurred because I'm not in the CSS directory. CSS, my style. And let's try that again. Right, so we're getting somewhere with that. Um, the styles are a bit, bit weird there. Uh, this isn't inside a row as such. Uh, and I'm too far down as well. I thought about, I'll sort out them styles in a sec. Anyway, we've got the, the concept concept of this container and then our block body is outside that container so if we put this inside the container um, and then refresh we should find that we're, we're now inside that container this sort of weird starter template thing is pretty much probably yeah exactly what they've got on that 90 um 90 is far too big i think it must be 60 or something that we want just don't want it like sat over the top um maybe it's even 40 uh, maybe maybe it was this one that's 60 Something like that. Let's just give that a shot. Uh, good enough for the moment. So anyway, that's basically where, where we're up to with the first bit. That's that sort of twig, weird inheritance thing that you've kind of got to get your head around. But basically, we're going to get rid of this this starter template section here entirely and then just start working with our body from the next video.